What's good? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and I'm a licensed esthetician. Before I even say anything about what today's video is about, I'm sure you know by the title what it's about, but I just want to get it out there. If you're not watching until the end of my videos, you're missing the best content, all right? At the end of my video, every video except the first video I posted, there's bloopers and they're funny and you should watch them. So make sure that you watch all the way till the end because I'm sure there will be some bloopers. If there's not, at least you can go back and watch till the end. All right, today we're gonna be doing Get Ready With Me Q&A. So I'm not gonna be really focused on the products, but the products will be in the description below. As with all my videos, I'm not going to be showing them or talking about them because that's not what this is about. And uh, shout out my editor, Kale. I just wanted to go on video and actually shout him out. He edits my videos ever since the second one. And so he's been really easy to work with. He's my cousin, not by blood, but but I was there when he was born. We're deep, we're tight, deep Capricorn power. All right, where am I from? Nobody asked this, but I just want to give a little preface on me. So I live in Las Vegas. I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. I've spent a decent amount of time in Salt Lake City, but I am in Las Vegas. My birthday is January 9th. I'm a Capricorn, as I mentioned previously. The school that I attended, I went to aesthetic school in Salt Lake City, downtown. It's now closed, but I'm still credited. I still have my license in Nevada and Utah. Trade school was an experience. I started off at the University of Utah for pre-med and my heart wasn't in it and I knew I couldn't keep going. So I've always loved makeup and aesthetics was, it felt right to me at the time. The job that I have right now is I work at a studio in Henderson, Nevada and I wax and do facials. Why did I start YouTube? Well, if you know me really well, you know that I've been talking about this for at least like three, four years at least. I started preparing for it probably like two years ago and then I chickened out and yeah, now I'm here. Do I have any siblings? Siblings. That was an actual question. Yes, I have three siblings. I'm part of a blended family. So I have my older sister, my younger brother, and my younger sister. Me and my older sister have the same parents. Me and my younger sister, we don't have all the same parents. And me and my younger brother don't have all the same parents. So it makes it really fun. So I have four parents, really five parents. So I have a plethora of parents. Is doing makeup a passion of mine? Is makeup a passion of mine? Is makeup a passion of mine? Yes. yes. I would definitely say it's a passion of mine. I've had a fascination with makeup since, I think they say like three years old. I say they because I don't remember how old I was, but my mom and my mom's cousin know how much I've loved makeup. When I was like three, I think it was, or four, I'd go and spend time at my mom's cousin's house and she would give me her whole thing of makeup, her caboodle of makeup, and I would just sit on the bathroom counter with my feet in the sink, just like super into the mirror, just going crazy. I would say that's one of my fondest memories as a child too. And so it's just it's funny that I'm here. She was at my aesthetics graduation, my esthetician school graduation, and that just meant so much to me because she truly saw the beginning. And so she wasn't surprised that this is the route that I went down. Um, and then my mom, I remember vividly like first, second grade, I'd always go to the Estee Lauder counter with my mom. I just remember being so mesmerized by my mom getting ready in the morning. I would just sit there and watch her, even though I should have been like getting dressed or whatever. And so yeah, those are fond memories and it has to do with makeup and I loved it. So makeup definitely is a passion of mine. All right, let's go a little bit deeper. So when I ask people to ask me questions, I said about my life, about life in general, about aesthetics, about makeup, about skincare, about anything really. It was very open, so that's what I got, and I'm thrilled. Thanks for everybody that participated, the real Gs. On your darkest days, what drives you to keep going? I would have to say my older sister. If I'm going through it and I call her, actually, you know what always happens is I'll be going through it, and because I don't like to share my burdens, she'll call me and something will happen where I'll have to end up telling her or she'll ask me straight up. You know, she always has really good advice. She's really successful. And so I look up to her in so many different aspects. And so when she gives me advice, that helps me keep going. That drives me to keep going. Just knowing that, you know, she's watching me and she's rooting for me. Yeah, I would say my older sister. Obviously other family members, they do the same thing for me. But lately my sister really has been my ace, my go-to. And so I appreciate that because we haven't always been close. So it makes me happy. Other than that, if this person is asking like internally what drives me to keep going failing being a failure i don't ever want to be a failure so that kind of drives me to keep going you know when i have to get stuff done or i have to do better fear of failing really drives me forward we are done with our concealer and our powder and our foundation. The next question is, I guess I didn't know that I also do facials at work, but that's okay. If not waxing your facials, what else would you want to be doing? YouTube? Just kidding. On that note though, the reason I do YouTube is not for the clout. I'm not trying to get famous. I'm not trying to make lots of money off of YouTube. I'm not trying to make any money off of YouTube actually. If all that happens, dope, cool. 
that'll be tight. But <laughs> my main goal for YouTube is I have so many of my friends and even just like acquaintances who message me or text me and ask questions about skincare and makeup and stuff. And I just thought that it would be good for them and fun for me if I actually get to put it on a platform and educate the people who are asking, but also people who maybe were too afraid to ask, people who don't even realize that they need help. I don't know. I just want to help my family, my friends, my acquaintances, anybody that knows me or comes across my videos. You know, I just want to help more people than just, you know, the people I see at work or my friends via social media or text message. I feel like a lot of my friends are too afraid to ask me about skincare and makeup before YouTube because they didn't want to bother me with their questions or they didn't want to be a nuisance, maybe. They never said those things, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason why they never asked. Also, P.S. I cleaned my brushes, so yeah. I didn't make a video on it though because it wasn't gonna be interesting. I don't even have fun doing that. Why do you think it took me so long to do it? But what else would I be doing if I wasn't doing, if I wasn't waxing or doing facials? I'd probably perfect eyelash extensions. That's always something that I wanna use, perhaps. My studio doesn't offer them, so there's no real reason for me to be doing them. I've been practicing more lately on doing other people's makeup, so maybe eventually I could freelance. But I love where I work and I love who I work for. That's really important in this industry, in the beauty industry. It can be pretty cutthroat. You know, people can pretend to have your back with they don't or you could be in a situation where your managers kind of make you get cutthroat about you know clients and services and balancing books and all that stuff um so it's really awesome that i work with a small company it's a military-owned company family owned and operated they super support me i can't tell you how many times all of them have reached out to me while on quarantine lockdown while we we're closed i know that they actually care about me and they're rooting for me and i appreciate the support so yeah i'm exactly where i should be i don't think that i want to be anywhere else right now i'm not a complacent person so I always like to work on myself. Currently I'm working on my inner self and when I feel like that's obviously that will never be done but when I feel like I can start working on my outer life I wouldn't be against going back to school getting a degree maybe not canceling those plans all the way out since those were my plans originally since I was little. Now that my eyelashes are curled to perfection. A not so serious question why are you the GOAT aka greatest of all time? I'm not. I tell myself I am, and thank you for telling me I am too, but uh, I'm not, so I can't answer that. I think Michael Jordan is, pretty sure he's known to be the GOAT. Why do you enjoy skincare? That is a very good question. That's a question I never thought about until I got this question. Like I never really reflected on that personally. Growing up, my mom had perfect skin, my sister had perfect skin, and then I started getting breakouts. I think that's what really started opening my eyes to skincare because they never had to try and I always had to try really hard. But I also, like I said previously, I was pre-med at the University of Utah. I wanted to be um, a doctor. So my background is science. I love science. That was always my strongest subject. Shout out fresh freshman biology honors and sophomore chemistry honors. I love those classes and even junior anatomy and physiology honors. I always did well in those classes. It was pretty easy for me. I didn't have to try very hard. And then when the university wasn't for me at 18 years old, 19 years old, uh, makeup was always in the back of my mind. And aesthetics is just skincare and makeup. And I could use it medically if I wanted to, you know, in a med spa doing injections and more intense facials like the vampire facial or hydrofacials or dermaplaning, dermabrasion, those kind of treatments. So um, the opportunity is always, always there, but yeah, that's why I chose aesthetics and that's why I love skincare. So I always struggled. I always struggled with my skin. I still struggle with it. I always say that the minute that I'm done complaining about my acne, I'm probably gonna be complaining about aging. So I'm never gonna win. How do you know where to start with a healthy skin routine? It's so overwhelming. Yes, it is overwhelming. It's even overwhelming to me and I know a lot. And this person who asked it knows a lot too, at least scientifically, but obviously I went to school. I knew the basics because that's what they teach you. The facial routine, double cleanse, which I'll get into on a different video because I haven't even mentioned double cleanse, but cleanse, exfoliate, tone, mask, moisturize, etc. But how I choose my products in general and what works for me, I do a lot of research. When I look up brands, or if I'm on Sephora and Ulta, I'm looking at the reviews. I'm looking at how many stars they have. I'm looking up YouTube videos of experts or specialists using those products and what they liked and what they didn't like. And if what they didn't like doesn't really phase me, then I know that I can try it. Also, sample sizes or trial sizes, your best friends, they're gonna be your best friends. You don't need to buy full sizes. I also recommend, you know, subscribing to the Ipsy bag or the box or whatever the hell that is. Birchbox, BoxyCharm, those will 
put products into your lap that you wouldn't have went out and tried on your own. So yeah, that's my advice. The greatest advice out of all of it is trial and error. If something looks like you want to use it, use it. I mean, obviously don't break the bank over it, but if you're interested in trying it, then try it. Nobody needs to tell you yes or no. I mean, you know your skin. You know your skin better than I know your skin. Even if I'm looking at your skin, like you live with your skin every day, you know what it needs. And if you don't know what it needs, you're not paying attention. So just start paying attention and yeah, or I'll find you in the comments and you can ask me. But yeah, so I just research and research and research. I mean, I love that, like, I think it's Allure. They do, one of the magazine brands or multiple magazine brands will do like the people's choice of every category. So if everybody votes that product, then it will be mentioned. And so you can always look up those lists, the best products of, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 2020. Uh, so you can always pull products from there. Just be aware of the hype. Sometimes products get hyped up and they're overrated. So always, Look for reviews for that, look for YouTube videos for that, and hopefully I can help. But to also answer that question, how do you know where to start with a healthy skin routine? Start with basic stuff. You know you have to spend a lot of money, see if it works for you, get a simple cleanser or moisturizer, and then add in an exfoliator of some sort after that, and yeah. Just use it until you don't have a reason to. Obviously make sure that the ingredients are clean. You don't wanna be putting any sort of harsh chemicals on your face. Things that we rub onto our skin do absorb into our bloodstream. So you wanna make sure that you're being aware of that. This one's a funny one. Who is your favorite Mormon? And that's no shade on Utah. That's somebody who lives in Utah, who is LDS, who asked me that. <laughs> And that is James Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. This man is an amazing person all around. Awesome person, awesome coworker, awesome dad. He also helps me in the gym to this day, even if he doesn't know it. I used to get sessions with him back when I worked at 24 Hour Fitness back in when I was 18. And ever since then, I still use his workout program. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it below. I'll link his, whatever his business is right now, I'm not sure. I'll link his information below, but yeah, that's my favorite Mormon. No disrespect to anybody else, he asked me it. So duh, of course I'm gonna say that. I kinda already answered this, but are you only waxing right now or do you also offer facial treatments? Yes, I do both. And with facial treatments, we also offer chemical pills and chemical pills are a more extreme exfoliation. Uh, with our chemical pills, it's Dermalogica, so there's really no downtime. So if you're interested in that, let me know. When everything opens back up, I'm more than happy to provide that service to you. But facials are awesome. I recommend getting one once a month along with your regular daily skin regimen. That will really bring your skincare from here to here, just getting a facial every month. And you know, if you're unsure in your area, obviously make sure they're credited and legit, but uh, sometimes you can find pretty good deals on Groupon, so then you don't have to come out of pocket all the way, and then you can see if you even like the person who's touching your face, because that's a big deal. I mean, not only are you gonna be paying pretty, pretty nice price for service, but you're gonna be up close and personal with that person. That person's gonna be all up in your business, and so if you don't like the person who's doing it, or if they're talking and you want it to be quiet, or whatever, you wanna be able to jive well with that person, mesh well with that person. If someone could only do one thing for their skin every day, what is the most important? One thing? Oh my gosh. I already went over what happens if you didn't cleanse every day. If you don't moisturize, that would be terrible. Sunscreen is really important. Oh, one thing. I would have to say moisturize wins because I mean, yeah, cleansing's important. You need to clear out your, your pores and all that good stuff, but if you're not moisturizing, then your barrier is completely and utterly destroyed. Yeah, moisturizer. So make sure you guys are moisturizing, but good thing we don't have to only choose one because that would be a nightmare. How often should you be using masks? You can use masks every day. This is when knowing your skin type comes into play. Um, If you're more sensitive or on the dry side, you need to be more careful about the masks that you're using, especially if you're using them every day. And then everybody, any skin type, any skin condition, if you're using masks often or every day, you need to be rotating them. So you shouldn't be doing, you know, two exfoliating masks in a row. You need to be doing like a deep cleaning mask. So like a clay mask, pulls all the impurities out, balances your oil. And then you can do like a hydrating. And then the next day you could do like a brightening. And then the next one you could do overnight mask. And then the next one you could go back to that deep cleansing. The only thing that you shouldn't really do every day is what I mentioned before. You know, if it has acids in it, AHA, BHAs, PHAs, enzymes, don't use those too often, more than your skin can handle. That's exfoliating. You don't wanna be exfoliating too much because you'll get too much exfoliating equals not enough exfoliating. It, you'll have the same condition, the same skin issues, the same skin concerns that you get from not exfoliating. The same thing will happen if you over exfoliate. So make sure that you're being aware of that. But yeah, masks are great every single day. They're just like a heightened treatment. 
a lot of the beauty industry's like secret or any individual's secret, not only facials regularly, consistently, but especially if you can't afford those consistently, then masks should be something that you're doing really often. That takes your skin from, you know, here to here. So use masks. Let's go deep again. Have you ever felt like you have had something, someone holding you back? If so, did you confront it them and what gave you the courage to do so? So have you ever felt like you have had something or someone holding you back? I think the number one thing slash person who holds me back is myself. I think that I am the number one person that gets in my own way. Do I confront it or them? Yes, that takes looking in the mirror and telling yourself that, you know, you're getting in the way of your blessings. You're getting in the way of things that you can achieve by limiting yourself. Uh, I'm my biggest critic. I'm my biggest enemy. I think for most people, it's like that. I'm the type of person that I'm always in my head. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yeah, so I get in my way frequently and I call myself out. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for me to, to call myself out, but eventually I come around to admitting that I'm the issue or I'm the problem. And that's of course with like goals and opportunities and even fun situations, I'll be my own problem, talk myself out of situations and then I miss out on a fun time, a good time. Same thing with goals and, and opportunities, so yeah. And what gave me the courage to do so? Dang, I think it comes from, you know, the parenting I've received from all my parents. All of them are no bullshit type of parents and I appreciate that. So never enabled, I'm always called out for my shit, I guess you could say. And so yeah, and I'm proud of my courage because you know, calling somebody else out is pretty easy. I'm confrontational, I won't lie, but calling yourself out, it's pretty hard. But once you learn how to break down your ego and you're able to call yourself out, then you're able to achieve more, so. Do you need it? What are you doing? Are you kidding me? This is what happens when I film. Let's just do gloss. My lip gloss is popping. My lip gloss is cool. And if you've gotten this far through the video, finish the lyrics in the comments or put the lipstick emoji so I know who the real ones are. Because I see it, you know, with the insights on YouTube. A lot of people don't watch it all the way through, so I see you. So show me where the real ones are at so I know really who's rocking with me in this journey, this YouTube journey of mine. All right, we're done, but I have a couple more questions. So let's get into it. I really burnt the fuck out of my finger. I thought it wasn't that bad, but uh, you know, me and that uh, curling iron, just we don't have a really good relationship. As I burned myself with the curling iron, fuck. Damn it, it did hit my fucking finger. Maybe that will leave a mark. I probably burn myself every time I use it. Therefore, the reason why I didn't want to do it on camera, because I probably burn myself on camera. Yeah, exactly. Honey. What are your biggest no-nos when it comes to daily skincare routine? Skincare in general, face or body in general. The guideline is, and I see so many people mess this up, exfoliation comes before hair removal. So if you're waxing, if you're shaving your legs, or if you're using, you know, the single blade to shave the peach fuzz off your face for a better makeup application, exfoliation goes first, then that a second for your skin because your facial skin is more sensitive than anywhere else on your body i don't recommend shaving your face and exfoliating in the same day you should give yourself about two days or else you will break out if you're not reactive skin type probably just wait one day you shouldn't be removing the hair on your face and exfoliating in the same time frame even shaving exfoliates your skin to a degree so you don't want to do the double exfoliation on one day or you could get a reaction or a breakout etc another big no-no keep your makeup clean keep your makeup brushes clean if you're putting on makeup every day and you don't keep it clean, that's probably the reason why you have certain skin concerns. Bacteria thrives in our brushes and in our makeup. And so if we're not practicing sanitation and disinfecting, then bacteria will grow and then we put it on our skin and then breakouts or whatever will occur. Uh, another no-no, oh, coconut oil. Coconut oil is my biggest skin care no-no. Coconut oil is comedogenic. I hate that word. And I'm not using scientific words because not everybody knows what the scientific word means. Coconut oil clogs the hell out of your pores. Um, if you're using it on your face as a moisturizer, you are not helping yourself whatsoever. You are, I'm in fact, doing the opposite by clogging your pores. Get something else. One of my biggest skincare no-nos is coconut oil. Leave it alone. Hair even too. You put it in your hair for a hair mask and then you go to rinse it out, but nine times out of 10, it's not all the way rinsed out. And then you try to blow dry or straighten your hair and basically you got deep fried hair. So I don't recommend using it. Don't use it, throw it away. I hate overhyped things. Another skincare no-no would be touching your face. <laughs> Another skincare no-no is touching your face. The biggest 
thing that I love about wearing makeup besides enhancing my facial features is it prevents me from touching my face. I don't ever want to mess up my makeup, so I keep my hands off my face. Yeah, and I love that for me. So yeah, don't touch your, your face. You have gross stuff on your hands at all times. It's not worth it. The last skincare no-no, makeup wipes. Makeup wipes and also sleeping in your makeup. So sleeping in your makeup, don't do it. That's the biggest skincare no-no. Not only can it cause breakouts, but it enlarges your pores and it ages your skin and it makes your pillowcase dirty and then you put your head down on that every single night. Like that's gross. Wash your sheets and your pillowcases often. Don't go to sleep with makeup on. Unless you're obliterated, that's when you can use makeup wipes because you should be like half dead in your bed already with your makeup wipes on your nightstand and you just half ass take it off. Like at least you tried. But makeup wipes have zero skincare, very little to no skincare in makeup wipes. And if that's the only way that you're really washing your face, you're not doing your, your skin a favor. So get rid of the makeup wipes, get rid of the coconut oil and wear your damn sunscreen. How has quarantine seriously been for you? Is your mental and physical health good? No. <laughs> In all seriousness, um, quarantine has been challenging for me. Today marks day, I think 32, that I haven't been able to go to work. I don't know about you guys, but my work gives me a purpose. I think most people find, I mean, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, like that's your purpose, that's your job. Um, not downplaying stay-at-home moms because they have the hardest job in this universe. But yeah, it's been challenging for me. Staying busy hasn't been challenging. I always like to do a lot of different things, so I keep myself busy well. Wow. Wow. I've been confined into an apartment and so that's been really hard. I take my dog for walks, which help, but, and then physically working out in your apartment sucks. I want the gyms to be open again one day. I want to be able to lift weights because these body weight workouts is not for me. I like the gym and what the gym has to offer. Um, so my mental and my physical health, yeah, they're good. Yeah, I'm also working on them. My family has really helped with the mental part and physical part, you know, encouraging me to get a workout in and really being there for me. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent this quarantine being on FaceTime or phone calls. It's been really great. I'm really grateful that we have that technology and I'm just grateful that this happened when it did happen. I live in a nice place. I have Wi-Fi and it was the perfect opportunity for me to start this channel and I have my dog who, if you guys didn't know, Henny is a, an official emotional support animal. Um, so she does so much for me. If I didn't have her during this quarantine, yeah, I don't know where I'd be. I'd be going really, really, really insane for real. But thank you for asking that. I hope your mental and physical health have been good as well. Even if you're working still, this is still a very hard time. It's very weird. I think that we will be very grateful when we look back on this time. That's the thing that I look forward to is looking back and being appreciative of what we didn't have during this time. So when we go back into society, we're able to enjoy the little things which I try to preach naturally, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Always look at the glass half full and enjoy the people around you. Enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. All right, and the last question, which multiple people asked me this. One said, how did you decide you wanted to go to school to become an esthetician? What made you want to become an esthetician? What made you decide to become an esthetician? Which I kind of touched on earlier. My university pre-med life, it wasn't for me at 18 years old. Unfortunately, I wasn't in the best headspace. And if we want to get, go on to that level my idea of college for you know 17 18 19 year olds are the idea of college to 17 18 19 year olds is completely absurd unless you're a student athlete and you're pursuing a sport and you got a scholarship etc i think that the pressure that they put on young people to go to college early like right out of high school is absurd you're you're saying here take out 20 to 100 thousand dollar loan right off the bat for a career that i think that i want to do even though i've never worked in that field before before in my life. Um, so I think that it's just a bunch of baloney. Um, these universities don't care about the kids. They just care about filling their pockets. Uh, but shout out to those who have gone to college, especially right out of high school, did what they did. Or they're working in their field that their de degree is in, AKA my sister, shout out her. But everybody else, it's like, stop beating yourself up. If you didn't go to school right out of high school, if you still haven't gone to school, if you go to trade school, um, if school isn't for you, if you took 17 years to finish your four year degree, no matter what, like shout out to you, you, you tried it 
it or you knew early on that it wasn't for you and you didn't put yourself into debt over society telling you that you should have. So me, it didn't work out. I couldn't handle being in a classroom. You know, what was I in? The history of economics, just like dumb. You, you're sitting in regular ass classes and you want to be a doctor and you know that you're not even going to get to touch a stethoscope for like at least six years. It just didn't make sense to me. And unfortunately I wasn't rolling in the dough. So I had to work and go to school at the same time, which shout out to you guys who work and go to school. I did end up doing that for trade school, but when you when your heart's behind what you're going to school for and you really believe in, in what you're doing and, and why you're doing it, it's so easy to work and go to school 82 hours a week, no days off. Your commute is three hours a day. Yes, I'm talking from experience because that's exactly what happened to me for aesthetic school. But everything I was doing, I loved. You know, my job didn't suck. I didn't dread going to, to work every day. I didn't dread going to school every day. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it wasn't too far away. So that's, and it's hands-on. You know, school was hands-on. I went to trade school. Like I said, your textbook is science, but it's like skincare science. And then it's like, you have a textbook that's business, but it's like skincare business. So everything correlates back to your daily lessons. So I super, super love that. And a big question I get asked when I I'm at work is why did you want to start waxing? No, I didn't go to school and was like, yeah, I want to rip hair out of people's skin. Waxing was always fun to do at school. We enjoyed, you know, turning on the wax pot and waxing each other's legs um, or eyebrows or whatever. But we were doing facials every day. We got to practice makeup. We got to practice eyelash extensions. We got to practice different modalities like microdermabrasion, microcurrent, microneedling, LED, all of those things. And so we got to really get to know what we really wanted to do. And so, yeah, I loved everything. There wasn't really anything that I hated. Oh yeah, I hated uh, manicures and pedicures. That's not for me, no thank you. But I'd still do it if I had to, cause you know, you perfect your craft and then you essentially fall in love with it. But waxing is kind of like, when you're an esthetician, waxing is kind of like your initiation into the professional world. It's the easiest route to go, I would say. A lot of places offer training because school gives you training, but not to really, e each waxing studio that you will work at will have like their way of doing things. And so you get extra training and then you get extra confident. And then, you know, if you're just doing just waxing, which I started just doing waxing, and so you perfect that and you master it. And then I got to incorporate facials again, which facials, it was like riding a bike because we had done it every single day at school. Um, so I was super excited to incorporate facials into my work day. But yeah, you just kind of fall in love with all the aspects. And I think that goes for any trade that you want to do. You know, you're hands on and you're, you're in it. And so you just find, I guess, the, the good parts of it, especially if your heart wanted that to begin with. I don't know. I went to school with a lot of people who finished school but didn't get their license or didn't finish school. And, and that's okay too. You know, you, you start something and turns out it's not for you and that's fine. You also grow so often. So maybe at 21 years old, that's something that you wanted to do. But by the time you're 23, that's not how you want to move professionally. Also in this industry, being an esthetician, I'm kind of going off topic, I think. Am I? Let me know, Kale. Um, also in this industry, you have to understand understand that, you know, with estheticians, cosmetologists, barbers, nail techs, massage therapists, tattoo artists, all of us. I mean, I'm lucky enough not to be an independent contractor. Some would say that I'm unlucky. It just depends on how you're looking at the situation. But um, with our industries, we don't get a retirement. We don't get the 401k. We don't get, you know, health benefits. We don't get paid time off. We don't get sick time. We don't get FMLA. Um, that's why it's really important to work for somebody or within a situation that that values you or at least you are your own boss um, because then you have the power you know my boss is right now if something happened in my life or my family I would be able to say like hey you know work with me on this you know I can't go to work as, as you know I have to miss these days or I have to take time off or whatever um, and I know that they'd be willing to work with me um, but it's not always the case and so this industry these industries can get really complicated in that aspect because the days that we don't work we are not making money and that's just period you know I want to go on vacation but there's no pay time off. I have to outsource my my health insurance, my dental insurance. I have to save a 401k elsewhere and not within my work. So that's something that people who are looking into those fields or in, into my field and they're interested, that's just something that you have to think about. It's a downfall, but at the same time, we have so much other freedom. You know, we're not glued to a computer all day. I mostly am on my feet. I'm active. I get to talk to my clients really however I want to within reason, but um, they become my friends. And so I go to work and, you know, my coworkers are my friends, my boss 
boss is essentially my friend. My boss is one of my best friends and my clients are my really good friends and it just becomes a really loving, uplifting environment and, and I love doing it and I, and I always wanna be a part of it. That is the end of my questions. If you've made it to this point in the video, I want you to comment down below what your dream job is. What are you working towards so you can accomplish that? What is your dream job and why? So let me know down below, but yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for getting ready with me today. I have really fun stuff coming up. I'm super excited. Uh, I'm gonna be getting some fun packages in the mail and yeah, it's been super fun doing this for you guys. Um, I super, super appreciate all the support. Everybody sharing my posts, telling their friends, messaging me and telling me how it's helped them or, or even asking questions based on my, my videos. Anybody who likes, comments and subscribes, like seriously from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Like, comment and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. I upload at least once a week. And yeah, thanks guys. Have a good day wherever you are. We'll get through this soon. So, pissed. I'm just pissed. Makeup has been a lot. We're not doing this again, Evan. This man is playing Call of Duty again, and if he ruins my video again, I would be pissed. Nope. I'm trying. Oh. Kristen, stop talking. Did you see that? I couldn't make this one more fun than it is because they're serious questions. I'm open to that criticism, all right? I'm open. I'm open to it. I'm open. Also peep the shirt.